Hey, how y'all doing? Good to have you back again. Uh, it's Mr. Braxton, and I'll be giving you the lesson for the day. All right, I miss you guys so much. I think we're on the final days of this coronavirus thing, and as we go through, we're going to have uh, uh, Ian coming to this thing, and we're going to all be together, even if it's virtual hugs, but we'll still be giving hugs, okay? Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the technology just so we can still come together in some kind of way virtually. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your word so that we know how to live. And Lord, we thank you for your spirit to guide us through our lives. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Uh, we're going to be going into the lesson now, and before we get started, I just want to make sure that we have, know the books of the Bible. There is an Old Testament and a New Testament, but all together, there are how many books in the Bible? All together, old and new together, 66. I hope everybody got 66, all right? There are 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament, okay? Today's lesson comes from James, and James is in which testament? Okay, it's in the New Testament, all right? All right, and here is our key verse. It is James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. Okay? Now, uh, our scripture goes from James chapter 3, 13 through 18, and James chapter 5, verses 7 through 12. All right? 13. Who is wise? And understanding among you. Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers, who sow in peace, reap a harvest of righteousness. Be patient, then, brothers and sisters, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop, patiently waiting for the autumn and spring rains. You too, be patient and stand firm, because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grovel against one another, brothers and sisters, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers and sisters, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we count as blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or anything else. All you need to say is simple yes or no. Otherwise, you will be condemned. All right, so let's break that whole thing down. James is going through and he's writing his letter 
to, uh, to believers, and he's saying, uh, uh, you should look for wisdom and, and show, uh, show it by your good life, all right? He says, you are jealous, bitter, and selfish. Don't boast about your wisdom. This is not heavenly wisdom. It is not godly. And what he means by that is when you do something well and you, um, you boasting about it, saying, uh, saying that you're the best, and, or, or you uh, get jealous about someone who did better than you. And you do a comparison contrast to let everyone know that you are either just as good or not better. You just wasn't recognized. He said, that's not godly. Jealousy and selfishness, uh, disorder and evil will also be there. Okay. Godly wisdom is pure, peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It is full of compassion and good deeds. It does not have favor, favorites and is sincere. You see some people who, uh, who go through life and they, they want to have wisdom, but they don't want to do the things that will bring them uh, uh, good standing with other people. They just want to be recognized. But the, but the word says that godly wisdom is pure, Peaceful, gentle, and friendly. It's not. Uh, it's full of compassion for others, and it shows good deeds. And he goes on to say, peacemakers will be made righteous when they act with godly wisdom. All right. And he, then he gives an example, an analogy, or is, is, uh, how we can live. He says, farmers wait for the land to produce a crop. And they wait for the rains to come, okay? They keep their hopes up high, all right? And as the Lord comes near, he brings everything that is needed for their crops to come into being and be harvested. Just as the prophets, as an example, uh, who spoke in God's name, to, to be, they were patient in their suffering. And, uh, and they endured so that they were blessed. So we should be patient in suffering and endure to get God's blessing. This coronavirus is going around and it's keeping us uh, sheltered in place. And we don't get to do all the things that we normally do. We have to get a new normal, as they say. But it's because uh, you're suffering through this right now, but you'll be blessed later when this passes over. Now, in closing, he wrote, do not swear when you make a promise. Just say yes or no. You don't, you don't do like so many people do amongst your peers, because I've heard it a lot. I work in a school, and I hear it a lot. You hear a kid say, they'll raise their hand, and they say, on God. On God, I didn't do that. On God, I did this. You don't have to swear. You don't have to say, on God, you did anything. We need to stop saying that, okay? You don't swear on anything, it says, on heaven or on earth, anything. Just like, yes, I did, no, I didn't. Yes, let your yes be yes and your no's be no. But don't swear and please let us all stop saying, on God, you know? So in the, in the uh, story that we have, it says, uh, it's, it's talking about thinking first. And what it is is the, there's, a, there's two girls and they see some homeless people that are living in a park. And one girl, she knows some of the homeless people because her and her mom and her church comes out every Sunday and gives them some food so that they could be nourished. And they, they share the gospel with them. Well, the other girl, only thing she see is some, some, some homeless people who are, no doubt, they're not as hygienic or they don't, they're not as clean and things. And she has something to say about that. And the, and the girl who is working with her parents is saying, please, don't talk to them like that. Don't, don't, 
don't be mean to them. They're people like everybody else. And it's just, they just on a hard time. Our thing to do is to be compassionate and loving. And she became a witness because she was working. She, she didn't back down. A lot of times when you're doing the righteous thing, the godly thing, there are people going to challenge you on that. And they're going to try to tell you that you ought not to do that because that's not what cool people do. Well, you need to just not look at what pe cool people do. You need to look at what God is telling you to do for the good of someone else. And then what God is telling you to do that's in the word. Okay? So, uh, in conclusion, I'm going to just go back over all of this uh, and also tell you how this connects to one of the, the things that we're trying to emphasize this month. Uh, don't try to have the worldly wisdom only. You get wisdom, learn some things, but when you get ready to use that wisdom, you need to be using it for the glory of God. That's number one. Number two, the wisdom that you get from God is not ambitious and not selfish. The wisdom that you get from God it comes from heaven and is pure, is peace-loving, considerate, submissive, and full of mercy and good fruit. It is uh, impractical and sincere. So that is what you're supposed to be trying to have, those things, and, uh, and treat people as best that, as you can. All right? Now, uh, that concludes our lesson. Um, and uh, now you're going to see a video on Beatitudes. Now, one of the things that said in the scripture today was peacemakers. And, the, and as you listen to the video, I want you to also uh, speak along with it, sing along with it, and uh, say the Beatitudes. Because this is, this is the deal. In the scripture, it says, blessed are the peacemaker for... They will be called the children of God. And in this lesson under James, he says, blessed uh, are the peacemaker. Okay. Because they will reap the harvest of righteousness. So that was just one of the things that was in the same scripture of uh, what we're trying to learn about the Beatitudes. So we're going to uh, have the video now. And when it's done, we'll come back and I'll close. Matthew 5, 3 through 10. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. For they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are Ooh, yeah. the poor in spirit. Blessed are the Ooh, poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Sing it again. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who Ooh. mourn. Blessed are those who Blessed. mourn. For they will be comforted. Amen. 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 Blessed are the meek of the meek. Blessed are the meek of the meek. Call the meat.
All right, did you sing along with it? Did you go along with the Beatitudes? Because we've been doing this every Sunday, and it's, you know, we need to start getting this into our minds, getting this into our spirit, so that we will be able to pull it up when we need to, when we get back to school, as we deal with other people, and as we go on through our lives, okay? Hey, now that we're at the end of the lesson, let's do an activity before we leave. All right. All right, so, godly wisdom is... Peaceful. All right. Okay. Be what until God comes again? Patient. Don't what against one another? Complain. The Lord is full of what in mercy? Compassion. And lastly, what comes from heaven that is pure? Wisdom. All right. Well, that's the end of that. And now we'll move on to our closing prayer. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for all of the blessings that you've given us. We thank you for your word once again. Let you write these, these principles and concepts on the tablets of our hearts. Let us not forsake them or forget them let them always be there when we're older when we are have families and children of our own let us be able to to still hold on to the things that we've learned right now in our youth father we pray that you be with us and give us the patience and the wisdom that we need to have we pray for all these things in jesus name and also lord we pray to a swift end to this coronavirus ep epidemic. In Jesus' name, once again, amen. Well, that concludes our lesson. We'll see you again next Sunday. Hopefully, we will uh, be winding down on the coronavirus, and we'll be able to see each other at church soon. So in conclusion, let us dismiss with this. Let the words of my mouth the meditations of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. See y'all.